So I was all set up to do a video on object-oriented programming versus um, functional programming. And I had a whole thing laid out, and I did not like where it was going, and so I'm shifting gears. And I just want to give a Ramda JS tutorial, basically, and let it kind of settle in as a intro for some people to what functional programming might be all about. Uh, I've got the library here and we're working in JavaScript because that's what I've been in for the most part. And we have a few different things that we can pull in from Ramda and we're going to start kind of seeing why we might want to use it and what it could be good for. So the first thing that we should pull in, what would be a good first thing? The A good first thing would be like prop equals. All right. Let's say we've got uh, an array of people. Let's say this is people. We're going to give them names. Uh, we'll give them jobs. Let's get a few more. Let's get a few more. All right, something simple. And let's say we want to know if a person, so we're going to do like person is the first people. So now we've got, you know, got Sam out of there. And we want to know if Sam is a programmer. So let's say is Sam a programmer. Is Sam a programmer? How do we decide that? We could say sam.job equals programmer. That's really straightforward, really easy. Why would we ever want to replace that? step through it with me for a second. Ramda would want to approach this differently. Ramda would want to say prop equals, and then we would say pro, uh, programmer, and then we would say job, like that. The same a programmer is prop equals, the job property equals programmer. If we console log this, and we run that, Come on, give me my terminal, please. Yeah, I was doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, we get a function back. Why do we get a function back? Well, because we actually need to run this on Sam. So we're going to use this as a function and run it on Sam, and it's going to give us back. True. Sam is a programmer. Uh, here's how Ramda wants us to kind of do stuff is we're going to be Putting we're going to be building functions together by defining the smallest little units of logic that we can and composing those together. So we haven't made an is Sam a programmer function here exactly. We've made an is anyone a programmer that we can then put anybody into. So now we get to use that anywhere. But what's the logic that we're really doing? We're saying uh, that the job property of somebody is programmer. That's if they are a programmer. Another way we can actually do this is we can say, you know, have a, a does job equal something. So we could have like job equals programmer and just throw it in there like that. How would we make a job equals function? Job equals equals. And now this is a cool thing about Ramda. I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to explain it later. Prop equals job. Guess what? If we run that, it still gives us true. This works. So what's actually going on here is prop equals is a is a really simple, uh, really simple function. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. So prop equals. Presumably, what this is is we have the we have the object come in that we want to test. We have the property we want to test, and we want what value is that going to be, right? And we're going to return the property that object equals that value. That's what we want to get. So that's effectively what prop equals is doing. But how can we do this nonsense? What's going on here? How come this returns a function that can become job equals and then job equals can also return a function that we can then run on this thing? And it's this wonderful magical thing called currying. Uh, and if you already know functional programming and you hopped into this and you were probably sitting here the whole time wondering when are we going to start talking about currying? It's going to be now. 
Currying is where instead of passing in a series of objects like this, we are going to have our overall function return a function which accepts the rest of our arguments as uh, their arg its argument, and then so on and so forth. So instead of this, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do prop equal. And you know that if I wanted to do this exact same thing, it would be something like that. And that would be a uh, function, which would return object prop equals value, like that. To make this curried, there's two things we can do. One is we can have object here actually be a function which returns another function which returns another function. So now if we wanted to call this, if we had our person, right? This is our prop equals function. And we put that in here, which if we do this, we actually can't import this. If we have our prop equals function here, and I wanted to know, does the, you know, job property of Sam equal programmer, then we would have to do prop equals and we pass in Sam and then we pass in job and we pass in programmer. Does the job property, because job is prop, right? Job is prop. We can't do it this way though, because it's returning an array, uh, a function. It returns a function, which returns a function, right? So if we want to do this, we actually have to call it like this, right? Probably with Sam, and then it returns a function, and we call that with the next one, prop, which is job. We call that with the next one, programmer. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, that's so that we can leave off some of the arguments and get a function which we can then use to put that last argument in. So in this case, what did we just create? Sam and job. So we actually just created Sam job equals, right? So now we can run this sam job equals what programmer does sam's job equal programmer and we have a function specifically to do that we could also leave job off and we just have uh sam equal this some property on sam so sam equals and we could say uh name is sam's name sam you know that sort of thing this seems kind of strange to have to do this this way to put the arguments as separate function calls one after the other like that. So Ramda provides us a nice utility called curry. And what curry will do is we can just define this normally and surround the entire thing in curry. And what that will do is make it so we can call prop equals on Sam and on uh, what is it? Uh, prop is going to be job and then on programmer. We can call it like that. We also do have the flexibility to call it with separate arguments like this. Curry allows it to do both. Curry also makes it where if you leave off one of the arguments, this will return a function that accepts the remaining arguments. And if we leave off another argument, then it returns a function which accepts the remaining arguments like that. So curry lets us do this either way. It kind of gives a lot of flexibility. We're starting though to wonder why are we doing this in the first place when we're dealing with logic that I know I could do anyway. There is a purpose to it. There is there is a a a reason why you could do things this way and justify it and end up actually with something stable and maintainable and look back and say that was worth doing. In some cases, I was getting ready to try to compare object-oriented programming to functional programming. And part of the reason that I got frustrated with it was I was trying to write one function with functional programming composition. And it took me 30 minutes and I didn't figure out how to do it. So there's definitely things that this can make harder, but there are things that can make easier. You have to stick with it to find out why. So we've done this and we can do it a little bit at a time. If we do this, then we're saying Sam equals the thing. It's not really useful right now the way we have set it up. In functional programming, often your intuitive order of arguments is gonna get reversed and that's actually gonna end up being more useful. So you might put value first and then prop and then object. And the reason for this is now we run 
prop equals, and we're gonna pass in a value like programmer. And if we pass that in, we can say equals programmer. We now have a function that will tell you whether the property of an object equals programmer. So we can say equals programmer and pass it in job and Sam. And now it'll tell you if Sam's job is programmer. That's not actually what I wanted. I didn't, you know, down here, I wanted to be able to tell if his job was anything. I kind of want to change the order of this. I kind of want to have prop here and value here, right? That's what I want in particular. Prop equal, as it comes in from Ramda, is basically exactly this. It's a curried function, except it takes value first, then prop, then the object. So we can actually get rid of this because that's what it's doing. So how do we make the job equals is we have to tell it, I want to leave one of the arguments blank and give you the second one. And I want you to return me a function that can accept this as the first one and then the remaining one as the second one. And that's exactly what we get. So job equals is basically does the job property of something equal some value. And then as programmer, you can give it programmer, and that's basically going right in here when you call that. It's slotting in there. And then object gets slotted onto the end as the last one so that we can call it like this. And this is really useful because now we can do things like get programmers, and its filter is programmer. Right? Filter over it with is programmer as the thing, and then each iteration will pass the current object into filter and we'll get that. So we can say get programmers on people. Oh, filter's not defined because I have to import it. So I'm going to import filter. And now I got me. And now I can do, if I want to get artists, get artists is what? What do I want to do if I want to get artists? I want to filter on whether or not somebody's an artist. So I'm going to write it like I think it is artist. How do we make is artist? Well, is artist is whether or not their job equals artist, right? That's what it is. That's the logic there. And that's all I have to do to make that. I'm thinking in logical terms here. So now I can do get artists and I get my artist, right? And now I can do get managers the same way. Filter is manager. And what is his manager? His manager means, does their job equal manager, right? And I mean, you could put this in there. You could take job equals and throw it in here like that. And you could take job equals and instead of having it be out there like that, you could have it be in here like this and throw manager in there. And it would do the same thing, right? Filter, get managers. This would do uh should do the same thing oh i put job equals in here i didn't want to do that i wanted to replace that All right so and i get my manager back All right so that's effectively what we're doing but we're composing it along the way so that we can logically look at this and it's actually pretty clear here at least to tell what's going on if we're familiar enough with something like prop equals now ramda provides a whole lot of utility functions that are not going to be very apparent to anybody who's not used to them. I would take a, a step to remind yourself that using things like array.map and array.reduce, and if you see me do something like this and say, okay, I kind of get what's going on here, you had to learn that. And that was introduced like after I started doing web development. Everybody had to learn that. So this is something that you can learn, something anybody can learn. It's well documented. There are very few large projects with other people that I have worked on where Ramda itself was able to come into play. More often than not, you're going to end up in a situation where you want to do something similar to this without the actual Ramda library. So how would we do this with functional programming paradigm and process without pulling in a library that people don't really get. Well, with job equals, I'm going to say I want some object and I want to return 
what? I actually don't want job equals to accept an object. I want job equals to accept what? The actual value. So it's going to be a value that returns an object, uh, a, a function which accepts the object. And then I'm going to say object.job equals value, right? That's my function. And I can put this together as one, but then I won't be able to compose it. You know, I can make it where it just takes the two arguments instead of being a function that returns a function, but then I won't be able to compose it if I do it that way. Is programmer, is job equals programmer, I get to do this the exact same way. I can go ahead and just keep this. Filter uh, is really useful to be able to do this, but we can say get programmers equals, uh, you know, we pass in people and then we turn people dot filter is programmer. That's kind of the equivalent way of doing that, right? We would basically just take this, stick it on the beginning here. So now if I want to do get artists, we should be able to get our artist and we can do get managers and we should be able to get our managers. Nope. Get managers isn't defined because is managers isn't defined is manager is defined. So manager. So this is the same fundamental thing, but we've just gotten rid of Ramda and we're still able to do it because of this basic principle right here. If there was one thing that I would want to pull in from Ramda at any given time, it would be that curry method so that I can just write it out the way it makes sense. Value object and return object dot job equals value and then just curry this entire thing. And now I have some flexibility and it still works, right? So this is kind of how you would approach things from a functional standpoint. Um, I can't recommend Ramda in general and I can't recommend you don't because I don't really know and I haven't really experienced the performance levels and and you know I'm, I'm importing one thing at a time you can just import the whole thing and i'm not sure what the uh performance impact of doing these different things uh oh, okay it's not going to actually give you default so it does want you to do them side by side or uh, uh individually i mean which means it probably has some tree shaking uh ability here which would be good so yeah overall that's that's uh going to be an intro to that functional programming sort of mindset.